Hey guys, Guy has been doing another video. Hello to the new subscribers and the old subscribers. Tessa's um, video from um, Guy like Tessa's Spirit by the Spirit, you know. Um, and make sure this video is confirmed to you in your other, you know, in your connection with the Lord. In other ways, the way the Lord likes to, um, you know, talk to us. So, God bless this video in the name of Jesus. Have everybody feel the Holy Spirit, the Holy Fire, the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Trinity. Have me feel the Holy Spirit, the Holy Fire, the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Trinity. Every witch or warlock, every devil or demon, every monitoring spirit, I bind you up and cast you down into the abyss to burn in the name of Jesus. Um, have this video have everyone feel peace and tranquility, no fear, no anxiety, no depression. No anger, no confusion, as well as I am as I'm making this video. And also, um, just only conviction, not condemnation on this video in the name of Jesus. Um, yes. How does it feel to be sent to the people that it needs to be sent to on your time, Lord? I know it will be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today I'm looking at uh, this these verses that the Lord gave me a few months ago. Um, it was like a back-to-back -back thing. I couldn't stop talking to God that day. It was just a long conversation. And it was different for me. Even though I had stuff like this before with the Lord, but it was just more intense and it was more frequent. To the point of, like, it didn't stop. It was a little over what I usually expect. Hold on, y'all. So the thing is, it's like, right... I, uh, this video is about what's happening in the world, if you don't already know. Um, yeah, it's a video about the world. I hope I can drop some, you know, confirmations for people through this, if you already know of, because usually when you make, you know, when children of God, um, that's have these type of platforms make videos, usually, you know, y'all already know as well, other children of God, you know, already know what's going on. I have a candle right now. Um, it's just very calming for me when I have candles on the smell, the scent, it's just, you know, good for me. All right. So if y'all see that, you know, part right there, I just be chilling anyways. <laughs> um, so this is the verse. So it's Hebrews, uh, um, chapter 11, um, verse 39 through 40 it says these were all commanded for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God have planned something better for us, so that only together with us, so that only together with us, we would they be made perfect. So I looked at the meaning of this, and it says right here. Um, it says ultimately that means trusting God, intent to make God a good on His promises for an internal perspective. The model of faith presented by those people in light of the struggles they face ought to inspire Christians towards a more confident, purposeful faith. Um, like I said on my other videos, a lot of children of God are waiting for promises that are going to be fulfilled even in these trying times. But the thing is, right? Faith is so important, but it's not always so easy to have. It's not. It's something that you have to pray for, sometimes fast for, petition for, worship, all that. However you like to worship, if it's with actual gospel music or instrumental, either or, it is a lot of something that you need to do. I don't understand what's going on with this. Um, some people acting as if something is terribly wrong with you if you don't have faith. That stuff is sometimes something you got to work on. Um, it's a humbling. It's a lot of things that goes on. But allow God. The biggest thing of it all is allowing God to make you a new person. Not getting irritated. Not getting frustrated with the Lord's instructions to get you to that point where you feel the peace of the Lord. All right. In the name of Jesus, I feel God right now. That's what I'm saying. You got to ask God for faith. And wherever season that you're in or whatever that happens to the world you gotta ask God for faith I don't know what's going on with people thinking otherwise you gotta ask the Lord for faith period okay so look so I looked up 1139 strongs and I'm not gonna lie to you of course um I just want to say this real quick too of course if you get um increased faith it will make things move 
but you got to ask God to help you with that. It's a lot of reasons why a lot of people have lost faith over the years. It's a lot of reasons. A lot of things have happened to people that have made people lose faith. So hold on real quick. All right. So I looked at 1139 Strongs because this is how God was talking to me. Like it was like back to back, back to back, back to back, you know. So I, I, I was just putting everything together. I'm trying to like, okay. So it says right here. It says, to be possessed by a demon. I am possessed. I'm under the power of an evil spirit or demon. Something's going on right now in this world. Um, and it's really bad. It's just a lot of people like losing their minds. And uh, if you know, if you haven't even noticed, but it it has been something, you know, going on. Like, um, for instance, right? I don't know if y'all been hearing about the demon face. I don't know if y'all been hearing about the demon face syndrome, seeing stuff that happening on planes and all this stuff of people losing their minds. And just in general, people just, the guy that's keep on punching women in the face in New York and punched a man. I don't want to talk about the year he punched a man too. Um, Like a lot of different men has been punching people. Um, I feel like personally, um, it's just, a lot of people are possessed and, um, and that's for us to realize, to keep God in prayer. Like we need to keep God in prayer. Like I'm telling you, um, God has told a lot of us in different seasons to be watchful on where we go, who we talk to, oh, this new friend. And do I really want to be friends with you? Or I'm just lonely. Let's be real. Do I really want to date you? Or I'm just lonely. Do I really want to rekindle back with you? Because I'm just lonely. I don't know why God is telling me this. Some people need to understand. If God's allowing you to be away from people. It's a reason. If God's allowing you to cut off with somebody. Maybe it's meant to stay forever. But you need to ask God with that. But some things are not worthy of re- uh, reconciliation. Some things are not worthy to take part in a new type of found friendship or relationship romantically. Sometimes it's just that's just what it's going to be. You know, maybe you're going to stay in isolation for a while and maybe for a little bit, but either or when you get those people, they'll be worth it instead of going off of desperation or fear or being lonely in different aspects of life. I'm telling you, a lot of people are possessed. I have so many dreams and visions where, you know, I wouldn't expect this certain person to do this or do that or do this and do that. And I'm saying this is that guys keep on continually telling people to watch themselves over and over again. Don't hold on. My glass is looking crazy. All right. Do not be uh, fooled uh, by the devil with this feeling of, I got to talk to my mom again, my dad again. Do I have other videos? I am a keno spouse person. Whoever that watches this, I do keno spouse videos. Whoever that's new here, I do keno spouse videos. Uh, Kingdom uh, Spouse Prodigal videos, a lot of different kind of videos. But what I'm saying is, and I do community posts and lives, right? And I talk about different things about reconciliation. But in some aspects, some people, that's that. Okay, that's it. You don't, they don't run the course with you, don't run the course with them. And you don't got, you know, they don't, um, it's time for a new season. You know, you don't got your lesson, you did your test, got your lesson out of it. That's it. All right. Um, and that's just it, because when I tell you, it is some people under an evil spirit. You can notice how people look at people now that you can walk down the street. They're turning over, looking at you with this evil face. They're looking at you like this. They're looking at you like that. They just do not like your spirit. And it's just like, that is an attack. Not saying be fearful of your life. No, just be prayerful and go about your business and ask God to protect you on if you make a mistake or not in your life. Make sure God protects you, you know, in those things that you do, if it's good or bad with certain people that you invite in your life. And if it's people new or not, ask God to do that. But in the end of the day, be cautious of everything that you do. Okay. Because it's just, we're at this point where it is people like, um, just basically, I feel like just losing themselves. That's just how I feel. Let me just push this a little closer. I'm going to just take this over here real quick because I'm going to leave my arm a little bit here. All right. But 
yeah, that's just really, that's just really it right there, right? So, um, let me just turn this up a little bit. All right. So, I'm getting to the other part, too. So, um, this little demon face syndrome, right, thing that they got going on, it's just demons. And that's just it. Things are starting to be manifested um, around the world. And I'm just noticing that, like, if you watch these movies of these people getting on planes, I'm not movies, I'm just say these um, videos where people get on planes and they get up to a certain level where they could not control themselves. I want y'all to, um, they say that they believe that it's aliens. They say that they believe that it is hybrids or something not of um, of human, right? I want y'all to watch um, this here. I don't know why I got it saying this, but um, watch the man that fell to earth. The man who fell to earth. Watch that. And I want to see what, what y'all um, see about that. Maybe y'all can email me or um, comment or whatever, or unless y'all already watched it, but watch that. Watch the whole season. It's 10 episodes. It literally got canceled in um, April 24, 2022. And I felt like it got too intense. All right. This is the same guy that was on the other movie that I had on the other video um, about two months ago or a month ago called uh, uh, 2012. The same African-American man. So please watch it. I don't know why God told me to say this, but... I'm telling you, something done got released from the rams of hell. And something, a lot of these evil entities are from underwater. Nobody want to talk about it. They're enough, they say it, but then people call them crazy. So then it's like kind of brushed up under the rug. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it at all. So, uh, <laughs> okay, that's why you got to be careful who you friends with and this and that. A lot of people ain't human today. I don't care. I don't want to, I'm not going to do this stuff. You can't say everybody's a witch or a warlock. Yeah, people are witches and warlock. Yeah, it's demonized people, but it is certain things that are from the abyss that is coming up. I'm telling you now, after that Euphrates River has been dried up, when I tell you it's been going, stuff been going to crap for a long time. Excuse me for saying that, but it's been really messy and nasty around this world. And um, I'm just saying this is that it done got even more terrible, I feel, um, since a shift that has happened here. It's a shift of blessings and then it's a shift of like evil, you know? But that's just tell the truth though. But anyway, that's what's really going on here. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a truth person. And I hear from the Lord, and he is saying, please watch this. Something done came to this earth, and I don't I don't know how people think they're going to deal with this with drinking and smoking and not being sober. Okay? I'm telling you, God been telling everybody since the beginning of time when he wrote those Bible verses for us to hear. Whoever, he's been telling all of us to go to him and listen to his commands. And then he's been talking about too. Um, over time in that Bible, if you really listen to it, the times, the BC and all this stuff, right? Around that time frame, he talked about drinking and smoking because when Noah was sitting over here building that ark, that people was just sitting over here doing what they want to do. You know that they was doing this and doing that, which caused them to not be sober. Listen, it's the same stuff now. You got street preachers that's going out to these clubs and other places that got a lot of drinking and smoking and sex, and they try to tell them stuff. They all all sexually sexually aroused and drunk and high, which causes sexual arouse, you know, and just doing them. And the thing is, it's like anything happens to this world, more likely those kind of people are done, right? Because you're drinking and you're smoking, okay? You need to ask God, whoever that got addiction that is watching my video, you got to ask God to keep, to, to have you knock off that addiction. I'm telling you now, not being sober, and every aspect, everybody talking about sober, like drunk. No, 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 sober, like high too. Just keep on taking drugs and weed and all this other ecstasy and mally and lean and all. Okay, listen, I know that world. I used to smoke weed. I used to kick it. <laughs> you hear me? 
Like, no, I'm telling you now, you got to let this stuff go. You are in a world of trouble if you decide to do that in this time we're at. Never been right anyway. Let's be honest. No time now. Hey, never been right to drink, smoke, all that other stuff. But when I'm telling you, when you drink and smoke, that devil is entered in you in different kind of ways. Different kind of demons are entered in you. And it causes you to do things or allow things. Okay? I'm telling you. What you really need to see, you will not be able to comprehend. If you hide, what you really need to feel and understand, you're not going to be able to understand it because a demon has came inside of you to cause you confusion, to cause blindness. They are very, very strategic in this time. God's strategic, but the devil is strategic too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's never going to win. He is ever going to win. He's never going to win nothing. We already know that in the book of Revelations. God is going to get him. All right. Going to get the devil and that's that and everybody that's part of the devil's plans. What I'm saying is, is that you got to be vigilant. This is how God is saving us is with stop drinking and stop smoking. I'm telling you now, because the stuff that's coming here, it will make your mind go like this. But if you are, no, you don't, you're, you're, you're reading the Bible. You're not drinking. You're not smoking. You're getting away from toxic environments like the Lord has instructed you to do. You'll be able to have a more clear vision. Sometimes you got people around you that do not have faith in God, don't even want to try to have faith in God. That cl cl clouds your vision right there. You got a stormy setting right here because they don't even want to sit out here and try. It's okay. Hey, it's not, it, it's like, all right, I got, I don't have no faith. Let's work on that fast. That's this. What, what caused this issue? Some people not taking therapy. This is therapy. Uh, this is therapy. Uh, your body and you, that's not therapy. That's nothing but more hell that will be cast upon you. I tell you, being around 2,000 people at once just to get the, the mind to stop racing and stop hearing your own thoughts. No, you need to go to God. You need a proper therapist that the Lord instructs you to have, and you need to work on yourself. All right? You need a clear mind so you can hear the Lord clearly. Nobody's fasting anymore. Nobody's doing that anymore. God is saying a lot of people have lost desire in a lot of things. And the Lord is like, how do you expect me to give you what you need if you're not listening to my instructions? You're, it's so easy to do wrong. It's so easy to be slothfulness. That's the spirit of slothfulness on a lot of people. Lazy, the spirit of fear. And the spirit of doubtfulness. If I do this, I ain't going to get nothing. Like you lack of motivation. And that all causes, that's the effects of the lack of faith. Because the lack of faith will make you not want to do these things that will cause you to get um, clear vision, wisdom, and knowledge. Whatever in life, before things happen and while things happen, you need wisdom. Whatever. That devil's trying to put us, a lot of us children of God, in these rabbit holes in a rat trap. Okay, a mouse trap. He's trying to put the cheese and the peanut butter on it and get it caught up. I'm telling you, but you got to stay vigilant. Know your things that causes you to want to go back to drinking and smoking. Figure that out. What makes you, what triggers you? What's going on? And go to the Lord. I'm not saying don't go to the pastor. I'm not saying don't go to the people that you trust and that is showed in and that is worthy to trust. And God told you that this is all right. This are at the end of the day. I'm a prophet, right? I always have to tell people this when I give somebody a prophecy um, that I know that usually, you know, or that I know it's like kind of bizarre to people or certain people that I know. Sometimes I'm like, hey, listen, like certain people I know, special family members, I'm like, listen, go to God, go to God <laughs> because that's your last, that's the other part that you need. That's your middle and your last. I'm the first because God gave it, you know, through me in this situation. Other times, sometimes God is on, you know, he just do it himself. But I'm saying that this is the first time you might be hearing this. Well, he's going to be the second. He's going to be the third, you know, part of what you need. He's always going to be the first because he gave it to me. But I'm saying is, I, I would never know it if he wasn't God telling me anything. But I'm saying this is that whatever else you're looking for, you need to work you need to get in there and get in that Bible and you need to fast, petition, worship, pray, all that good stuff, right? I'm just saying. All right, let's get to the next part. So um, I just wanted to say that, please listen to this. This is, I, I, I'm mandatory that. <laughs> please, God mandatory that I'm saying I agree. <laughs> I agree. 
because man, they canceled that. And I did never will understand why. Hmm. All right, let's get to the next part. All right. So we got John and then we got Luke. So John eleven forty one. All right. So let's look at it. All right. So just looking at it real quick. Just really trying to see what God is trying to show me here. Because when I tell you it's a lot of different ways, the Bible can be intriguingly um, interesting in different ways. And then sometimes it can be like kind of, not going to say annoying, but like frustrating on the sense of how do you learn how to understand what the Lord is saying. All right. So we're going to look at John 1141. Just look at that. John uh, chapter 11. Um Verse 41. So it says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. It says, And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, they may believe that thou hast sent me. So let's look in this a little more. We are on, I'm going, I'm scrolling all the way down. I'm looking this up in Bible Gateway, this part right here. All right. So it says right here. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Jesus once more deeply moved. Come to the tomb. It was cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But the Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. When he said, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with stripe of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. All right. A lot of people in this hour, Lord speaking to me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, it's just coming on me really strong. It's it's just God is saying it's a lot of people that are dead. I remember when I was going through witchcraft heavenly. Like I felt like you know, I you know, I have faith in God, but nothing. After all these years and mom slowly, I'm starting to slowly but fast, I'm seeing God's like mercy and grace. It's beautiful kind of frightening at times when you think about what he does and don't do or don't allow or whatever, if I would say, but it's exciting and it's just beautiful. I just wanted to say it and very fascinating. Um, but how the devil think he can get you, but he really can't, you know, all that hatred inside of people and inside of these demons that get inside of people. I would say demons that get inside of people and just demons in general. It's just, to learn and get more knowledge, it's just, it's great, right? But what I wanted to say was, a lot of Lazarus are in this season. You need to get up. God's been telling a lot of people, get up. I don't care what attacks you're going through. It's not meant to kill you. Get up. You've been sleeping a little too long. You've been eating a little too much or not at all. You haven't showered, you showered, and did you go back to bed? Or sometimes for some of y'all, it's probably hard to get up to use the bathroom, get out and get some sun. You just go to work, go back home. You know, it's like you're losing weight, you're gaining weight. Your hair's falling out. Have you even been taking your vitamins? Like, what's been going on for real? Because it's like y'all haven't been really taking care of yourself. And the Lord is like, hey... I'm telling you, everybody needs to start drinking more water. Everybody needs to start eating more fruits and veggies. Everybody needs to start taking care of themselves more, right? But going to proper people that gives you proper food because, you know, they're messing with food these days. And some of y'all know that y'all supposed to be getting this done and that done. Y'all supposed to be preparing for certain stuff. And you've been instructed in the spirit to do so, but some of y'all have not. Um, some of y'all supposed to be getting into gardening and doing that and doing this. Some of y'all supposed to be getting into getting more water. Um getting gear, getting this, getting that, 
Um, and also besides doing that, starting a business, um, um, writing that book, uh, you know, starting a podcast, starting YouTube, starting, uh, getting, um, you know, getting things done, you know, a lot of work, moving, uh, staying at the place, getting a new job, starting that new job staying at this job to, you know, whatever that that is, you got a job to do. And some of y'all have not been doing that. And the Lord is like, get up Lazarus. Cause I'm telling you, woman of God, man of God, you are not meant to be killed through these things that the Lord is allowing in your life. You're not meant to die. This was all for a lesson and a test. That is it. It's not meant for you to stay there. He would never put us in a situation for us just to stay there. You are not meant to stay there. You're meant to figure this out and say, okay, this is what's going on. That's what's going on. It's time to get up. That's what the Lord is saying. It's time to get up. Your faith is, you know, being tampered with. God knows that, but it's time to get up. I'm going to tell you something God is saying to me. A lot of things that are about to happen to this world is not really going to affect the children of God like we think it is. We were affected in in our war for so many years. You know, not saying that this stuff that's come here is not going to bother us that have been in war and spiritual warfare and all this stuff. What I'm saying is, is that a lot of us are going to be seeing people fall while we are rising. Not to say laugh at them or like, ha, ah, you deserve that. I, I, I already knew that, I, I, you know. But what I'm saying is, is that, because it's always good for a heart check to ask God, or, you know, how I'm doing. Am I being, you know, jealous? If I'm being selfish? Am I being mean? If, you know, do whatever God elevates you in. But what I'm saying is if you feel like you might be tipping off. But what I'm saying is, is that... The devil has attacked our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our health, uh, romantically, everything. I can tell you, just been really, you know, our minds, our spirit just attacking us. And it's like, look, please, God is saying this too, um, to tell this part. Um, you know, he been having our family members and friends and co-workers and bosses and strangers to attack us. You know, it's kind of like no peace. You're going to bed, you're dreaming of eating, having sex or doing this and doing that. You get up and it's the same thing. God's saying a lot of people are going to have peace in a lot of things that are happening. Oddly enough, you're going to have peace because you need to get up anyway. A lot of the things that are happening, majority of it is to the wicked. They did not ever respect God's grace and mercy ever, never did, never will. The ones that don't want to change, are you? Th- oh, I feel like me. Do you think God will allow you to be right with them? That's why he's trying to prepare us now to save money. Oh, I feel it. Get some money out the bank. It's put it in a safe, put it under your bed, put it in a, put it in a basement, put it at, put it somewhere in the cracks of your wall to keep money because, you know, when stuff hits the fan, you want to be able to get out of here. You want to be able to get to the next destination and still have your job or still have this and still have that. Nothing, and I mean nothing, will ever prosper for children of God in this time. Something might hit, but it'll never prosper. That's what the Lord is saying, okay? God is showing me an extra two numbers here. Let me look at this real quick. But I just wanted to say that it's time for Lazarus, men of God, women of God, to get up out of that bed, though. I'm telling you, look. So God show is showing me right now, 835 Strongs. It says happiness and blessedness. People are going to be blessed. Thank you, God, for this. And it says, um, says right here, yes, it says happy. You're going to be blessed in this season. I don't care what you see that's happening to family members that didn't want to be remorseful and repentant. I don't care what you see with friends, people, exes. I don't care who it is. I'm sorry. It could be your child. It could be anybody. What I'm saying is he done told people. When I tell you God showed me this um this movie, on um, this episode, Touched by an Angel, it was about a school shooting. I'm going to see if I can find it, um, and I'm going to put it on here. When I tell you God showed me how he talks to the wicked, do you understand? He talks to him, her, whoever that's doing stuff to you, whatever doing that stuff to other people. He is talking to them. They don't want to listen. You watch that episode. This is some stuff. This is some homework, some research. 
look at it. I'm going to put it on in the Touch by an Angel episode. Touch by an Angel episode. I'm telling you now, because a lot of people can do something different. They don't want to. Then when stuff goes to wherever it go, oh my God, pity me. It's always been like that with the wicked. They always blaming it on somebody else. And at the end of the day, God, they're always blaming God for whatever they go through. And I'm blaming it through people that's, that, that, um, that demonstrates God's character. You know, they want to blame you. The narcissism is just, they can't turn it to themselves because if they do, they're going to hate themselves more than they already do. Because the fact that the matter is the only reason why they're bothering any child of God is because they hate themselves. They hate they couldn't do what we're doing, you know, and, and do it so effortlessly because that's God. He's graced us in anything we go through in life. He is gracing us. We're supposed to die off these attempts. We're supposed to crash and fall, but we don't. Happiness is for the children of God in this season. I don't care what the devil is telling us, showing us in dreams and fake visions. You got to pray over that because they be playing. God said you're going to get everything. That white picket fence and that dog. You're going to get it. You're going to have the husband, the wife, the health, the love, the family reconciliation, whatever God told you, whoever that that is. It might not be all the family members that you. It might not be all the friends that you want, but it's enough to make you know God gave you a promise that was fulfilled. And that's all that matters. These people have been disturbed and striving so hard. These wicked people that the devil has put inside of these people that allowed it or unknowingly, but the ones that know it for sure, they are so persistent to ruin us. And they're just bringing themselves more and more to disappointment. All right. Let's look at this too. All right. All right. Let me look at this real quick. So I'm looking at Matthew um, 21, 17, because when I looked at 835 strong coordinates, it also showed right here. Um, It also show right here to lodge in the open to lodge. I lodge in the open lodge past the night. So when I looked at it, it says spend the night and then I looked a little more into it. So I decided to look up Matthew 21, 17. And the meaning of that is basically talking about, um, uh, it says Jesus fulfills a prophecy from Zechariah about the coming of the king to Jerusalem by riding in on a donkey. The people celebrate and praise him. Then it also talks about how um, his works testified of him more than the Hosannas and his healing in the temple was the fulfilling the promise that the glory of the later house should be. It also says that um, in some have, um, and when I looked at the actual Bible verse, I'm sorry. Let me look at the Bible verse of it. <laughs> um, it says right here. I'm looking up actually the whole thing of it all. It says, and by leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. But when I, like I said, when I looked at the meaning, that's what I seen. But it also says right here, um, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree for, but also you can say to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. God is basically saying that like, um, hold on y'all. All right. The Lord is saying, um, in this part right here, right? That's cause he went to uh, the city of Bethany where he spent the night. Um, a lot of y'all need to like be with the Lord. Okay. Um, when I looked up the 835, he's saying basically be with him. Um, some of y'all need to have, uh, spend some time with the Lord, um, you know, before you go to bed. Um, some of y'all need to do that at night. Spend some time with him 
at night as he tell you some stuff that he really want to tell you. Uh, spend some time with the Lord. Um, you know, when you before you get the promise and after you get the promise, be around the Lord. He, you know, it's a lot of stuff God be want to tell people, but they're so busy. Sometimes people are so busy looking at pastors and apostles and evangelists and prophets and everybody but what God wants to say. Go to him for a little while and take some rest in with him. You know, um, you know, ask God to regain your faith in this time. God keeps talking about faith a lot, regaining that faith through this time. Because when I was looking at the meaning of it, it says Jesus entered the massive Jewish temple in the Jerusalem during what he call what what he now call Holy Week. He in, immediately drives a marketplace of the temple and overturns the money changers' tables. It says Matthew Jesus uh, Matthews Jesus both um, no I just go up here oh so Jesus is at once both a commanding figure of a, a king on his way to the coronation and a jester mocking the conventions of power. Matthew's Jesus both cleanses the temple, readying it to fulfill its promise and warns that its destruction is imminent. I-M-M-I-N-E-N-T. Immediate. I want to say this right, y'all. Imminent. 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 Okay. Um, so, yeah. And um, and it says he comes as both deliverer and agent of judgment. Okay. Um, and I'm also just looking more into this. It also says right here, too. Um, just want to make sure I got everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it says, and some have interpreted Bethany and house or a place of sheep, but so much of this town and what account is given of it. And he lodged there either in lodge there. Hold on, I'm looking this up on BibleStudyTools.com. I hope y'all got what I got, um, what I was getting out of it. But yeah, I'm, that's all I seen when I got to eight thirty five. Just keeps talking about the promises of the Lord. I just want to make sure that I even need to even keep going on with that. But yeah, um, all right. Just wanted to make sure. It says right here, um, Romans 8.35 through 39. It says, so Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. It says, for shall separate, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger of sword or sword as it is written. For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, any other, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is, that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um... Like I said, whatever that goes on in this world, we know that we have God. Okay. I don't, like I said earlier, I don't care what he's doing to the wicked. We have God. We have him. He, you know, I don't care what the devil's trying to say. We have God at the end of the day. He is our father and he will protect us and he will love us. Okay. And that is the part of it all. He's protecting our heart that is being tampered with. God said, guard your heart, right? In these seasons, for many reasons, a lot of people think like guard your heart in the sense of like, like romance, right? No, guard your heart with anybody. You know, it's with family. It's with friends. It's with um, people that are no mean, no good for you. Um, or if they even do mean any good. What I mean is that, 
people might say stuff and do stuff, and majority of the time it's from the devil, uh, making them say that, you know, and if that's a good person or a bad person only doing it, it don't matter, it's from the devil, and God would want us to guard our heart through these times, because things might happen in our face or behind our backs or right in front of us, and it seems like, you know, it's a human thing. I have to keep learning on that. I think we all do that. It's always the devil, you know, allowing this stuff, um, you know, devil doing it. And then don't get me wrong. Like I said, the wicked allows it. But what I'm saying is, is that it's for us to understand that, you know, we're only flesh at the end of the day, right? And our flesh is very weak. And so you can tell who's fighting, who's not, right? But at the end of the day, don't let it get to you. Don't let it tamper with your good heart. I don't know. God keeps talking about that, like, because a lot of people are changing their perceptions on God and themselves. All this used to be Christian. So some people, you know, were never Christian. And some people probably were used to be Christians. You know, they just got to gain their faith back with God. Um, because some people, they were never Christian to begin with. They were just doing it for a trend and get a woman, get a man, get a friend, get publicity, get, they lose God as an aesthetic. But anyway, what I was saying was, is that some people really did used to be with God and they just turned to atheism or just Buddhism, Muslim, whatever, or just nothing at all because of how much pain it kept continually having. And they didn't have anybody there. And some people are going to get that person. It could be you that's watching this that's left God alone. Or it could be you that's going to gain somebody to have faith again, make someone gain faith, help them learn how to get connected with God again to gain faith, basically, because God is only, you know, he's the whole instructor of everything. Something that you can do, but it's what you, you know, um, allow God to make you do. Um, so he puts that in our hearts, but we got to go with that. So you might have to have somebody that in this season that you got to, you might have someone right now that you got to help get back with God. And that is something that you're going to really be, you know, appreciated of. God's going to really love that. And this person is too, because they were so gone. They were a Lazarus. They were dead. Um, that's what the Lord is saying. A lot of people are gone. All right. So, and you need to bring them back. All right, because whatever that goes on in this earth, it will never keep us away. I don't care. The devil be trying to literally make us, you know, believe God will just condemn us like he does. And God will just like, you know, believe in the devil lies or something <laughs> like, like, especially with the testing and stuff like you fail and sometimes you don't. And the devil wants to prove it to God that you are not nothing. And that is not true. Like he did with Joe, right? But that is not true. God sees what's going on. He's not dumb. Okay. He knows what dumb is and what smart is. And he is not dumb. He's a smart God. Okay. Very smart God. He sees exactly what's going on. All right. So y'all don't need to feel like he's getting a one up on you because he's not. So it says right here, Luke 11, Luke chapter 11, um, uh, verse 41 through 42, but you know, I saw 1141. So, <laughs> okay. So it says, woe to you Pharisees, because you give good, uh, give God a tent of your mint, rue and all other key, kinds of garden herds, but you neglect justice and the love of God. I'm telling you right now, so Pharisee people in the world, I will tell you, I've met many, 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 many and I just think that you know, they can just keep on doing what they want to do and all this stuff. And that is not the case. So, um, it also says right here, but, but the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and evil, foolish. So, now, and so when I looked at this, right, so I'm going to look at the meaning of this. It says, giving doesn't make things clean. Giving comes from what is in within. And when done with a good heart, all things are clean. I'm telling you, like, I have to keep talking about this. Like, I'm telling you, like, God talked about this one time. I'm telling you, these people that be giving to people and doing stuff for people, they really don't mess with you a lot of times. Some people do not. A lot of times, some people um, that are, majority of the time, that are Pharisee-like acting spirits that got into people, they don't really mess with you. They're doing this for personal gain. They're trying to have people look at them like they're not evil, like they're not a, this type of, they don't, don't work for the devil. They don't do that. Yes, you do. 
you work for the devil more than you try to tell people or show people. If I keep giving so many things, it's going to hide basically the dirtiness that's inside of me. Yeah, to humans. Like, I don't see that stuff. He sees things before it happened and after. Like, he doesn't see people doing stuff to people. Like, some of y'all have Pharisee people around. You used to, whatever, you're going to. And you have to ask God for discernment because it's people around here that's, you know, giving people rides home or doing this and doing that. And the next minute talking about them, saying, I have to do this and do that for this woman. I have to do that and do this and that for this man. They're not really caring about what they're doing. You know, in the other side, like I said, they're talking about you all day, every day. I'm telling you. God is, he said, whoa. And whoa means, yeah. Because when life really gives you the, like a piece of, like, a piece of it, piece of, um, you know, the world gives a piece of you to, um, to you, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot being done. And they're going to be like, dang, like, I might have did this, but it did not cover up the lies. It didn't cover up the deceit. It didn't co- cover up the anger that I really got with this person. Um, people, jealousy, whatever that is. It's a lot of Pharisees in the church. It's a lot of Pharisees in a lot of places, jobs, homes. You got to be careful. People really act like they have a big heart, but their heart is so not, it's not even small. It's not even there. It's a literal rock behind their chest and they're it's just sitting there. But you got to know that, you know, and you know, you got to ask God for that at the end of the day. And ask God for you to be able to accept who it could be and what's really going on. So you can get out of those bondages that the devil be trying to put you in with certain people. You know, in certain situations. So that's just another thing. God keeps saying that, like, it's a lot of greed. Greed of of publicity. Greed of people liking you. Like... You don't have nothing to really, these evil people, usually they're all, they all the same. They all talk the same, act the same, do the same stuff. They're not unique. You know what I'm saying? They're very polyester, polyester, polyester. I'm tired, y'all. Polyester and just like boring and um, not exciting, not interesting. They feed off of other people and take what they take from others. And then they make a new person. They adapt to this new person and it's just weird you're not jesus you don't you know you just don't get up from the dead like you know like you're not jesus you're not this this actual real refined person that you always suppose like what is this you're literally taking something from someone else from another from another from another you're not jesus like it's just weird and they want you to like basically the more they give to you they want you in some kind of way to glorify them you're not jesus You know what I'm saying? You're not Jesus. Jesus was always very humbled. Like he would never, when his, when God gave him whatever he gave him, he always knew that it was from the father. It was, you know what I'm saying? Like the devil is always sitting over here trying to get glorified. Like you're not God and then you are not angels. These minion people that work with him, they're not angels. They try to claim they're someone else and they're not. You got to be careful in this season. It's a lot of people that are sheep clothing. I promise to God. Now, listen, also seen 810. Well, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So it says wastefulness, unsavedness. Okay. I'm telling you right now, this is what strong concordance. I'm telling you right now, you got to be careful because it is some people that have not got with God and they want you to go to hell right with them. Okay. They want you to kickle and clackle with other people about somebody. They want you to lose your job. They want you to not go to school. They want you to hate God. They don't want you to live your purpose, okay? When you see someone always doubting you, and the next minute they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you can. They doubt you, and the next minute they're like, yeah, you can do it. You're pretty, but the next minute you're ugly. You're this, that. You got to be careful in this season because... You need the right, proper people around you. The company that you keep is very important for your spirit and your flesh and your mind and your heart and soul. It's very, 
very, very important. It really fuels you in the best way if you're around the right people that corrects themselves or allow a person to correct them in the proper godly way. You can't be around someone that thinks they're always right or or think you always wrong or try to bring pity. I'll never do right uh, for you. I'll never make you happy. I don't know what's wrong with me and I don't know why I'm never good enough. All this stuff just to flip it right back on you. You got to be careful with these narcissistic people in this hour. Sorry, y'all. This devil, this devil doing the dermos today. Um, hold on. Let me see real quick.